Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today I will talk about my thoughts and experiences with my Honda XADV after about 3000 Ks now, about the pros and all the cons. I will not start a discussion about is it a motorcycle or a scooter, I think it's a crossover. So I will just uh, go on the points that are important for me when I ride a bike. And the first one is how do I sit on a bike and uh, I will show you how to get on a Honda XADV and how you can sit. I would try to go over the middle and now, now you have to be a little bit flexible, you can see I have to get it over, I mean I can do it but just imagine you are not that flexible. It's more difficult than on a normal scooter because the tunnel is higher. So if you are sitting on the Honda XADV, the seating position is like on a scooter. So your legs are in a 90 degree angle, you're sitting upright, you have the chance to position your feet in different positions and you have a quite wide handlebar, which is very pleasant for riding. So the seating position I think is good. It is very good if you are Using the Adventure foot packs, which I would advise to buy if you are interested in the Honda XADV, because now you can sit a little bit more dynamic. The legs are more in the motorcycle position. And the interesting thing is, if you are going on a gravel road, you can stand up and your center of gravity is in a good position in the middle of the bike. So this is very pleasant. I would advise buy the Adventure foot packs if you are interested in the Honda XADV. This seat here is not an original seat anymore. It is upholstered, so it's a little bit thicker, more comfortable. The original seat um, is more on the stiff side. So for long touring, I'm not sure if it's that pleasant. So seating position, quite comfortable. You have many possibilities to position your legs and your feet. So more comfortable riding like on a cruiser, scooter, riding, and a little bit more motorcycle and adventure riding. So if you want to get off the bike, if you have the adventure packs, what I always do is just stand on the adventure packs, swing over it. This is very comfortable. If you don't have them, of course you are in this position, then just go down and try to get the foot over the middle tunnel. What about the handling of the bike? I will just show you. I just go on the bike this time from the other side on the adventure foot packs. So quite simple. So handling wise, the bike is quite heavy. It's uh, 235 kilograms without the side panniers and the luggage rack and uh, all the stuff that I added like the crash guards, LED fog lights. It's quite a heavy bike. So and you feel it if you want to maneuver it when you are standing. So if I want to push it forward or backwards, backwards is better because it's going a little bit down here, but forwards you can see it's quite quite difficult so maneuvering it's a heavy bike even the center of gravity is quite low you can feel the weight if you lean the Honda a little bit to the sides especially when there's some luggage on it you don't feel it when you are riding but when you are maneuvering or you are standing it's heavy because of the longer wheelbase the stability of the Honda XADV in higher speeds is very good. Also the brakes, at the front a double disc brake, at the back a single disc brake, really good brakes, so no problems at all with the brakes. The handlebar is really wide, so good for handling. It's a little bit the feeling like on an adventure bike, like on a Africa Twin, something like that. So this is very pleasant for riding. On the bars we have a handbrake, which is very easy to use, and you need it because when you are standing on the side stand, of course we have no gear, it's an automatic, a DCT. So when you are on the side stand standing and you want to avoid that the Honda is rolling away, especially when you are on a hill, there's no gear inside and so you have to use 
the handbrake. What I really like is the TFT display. Just push on one button and then it's on. Readability is very good even if there's some sunlight hitting the display. Lots of information. What I also like are the different riding modes like standard, rain, gravel, user and sport. And you can feel a big difference if you're using them. So very pleasant and lots of information inside the dashboard. So TFT, it's a big plus, I like it. The keyless ignition works absolutely flawless, no problems at all. Turning and the TFT switches off. And if you want to start, just push one button and the scooter or the bike is on. One thing that I really don't like are the inverted buttons for the horn and the indicator. So we have the horn at the top, indicator at the bottom. And what happens regularly is if I want to put my turn signals on, I'm using the horn and the other way around. So I don't know why Honda did this, but on most motorcycles and scooters that I've ridden before, the indicator button is on the top, the switch, and the horn button is on the bottom. So. This takes a while until you have it in your memory and still it happens to me very often that I am try to, to use the turn signal and I'm using the horn. The mechanism to adjust the windshield is here on the side. Just pull it out. There are five different positions, highest one and the lowest one. It's okay. It's not a electric adjustment and of course you can just use it when you are standing not while you are riding with some bmw motorcycles you have a turn wheel on the side where you can adjust it while you are riding this one only when you are standing little downside so what about the under seat storage i mean it's a mixture between an adventure bike and a scooter so there should be some under seat storage and it is we have a compartment with 22 liters. You get a full size helmet in here, but that's it. Not anymore. So not a bag, no gloves, nothing. It's just the helmet and sometimes not even a big helmet. Not very big compared to other scooters where you can put two full size helmets and some a small bag or some gloves or whatever. So we have a compartment, but not that perfect. Okay, so what else can we talk about? Suspension. Suspension on the XADV is a big plus. We have a suspension travel of 150 millimeters in the front and on the back. So this is a lot, so you can do a little bit of gravel roads, maybe some soft off-roading. Ground clearance also is quite high, so no problem with that. So suspension, I would say it's a plus. We have an upside down fork at the front, which is adjustable, and we have an adjustable spring in the back. So suspension, good. Compared to most scooters, the XADV has a chain drive. Is it a plus or minus? I think it's both. The power delivery, of course, is much better than a CVT with a belt. So this is a plus. One negative point for me is the maintenance. Of course, you have to loop the chain regularly. You have to control the tension of the chain and uh, adjust it sometimes. I prefer less maintenance, so chain is a plus and a minus for me. So my experiences are mainly positive. It's a great bike. You can do nearly everything with it. It handles really great. It's a little bit on the heavy side, but the white handlebars are really good. Seating position is very variable. You have different positions for your feet. So I really like it a lot. I still forgot one point and this is the price. And I think this is one major minus point for this bike. The basic price of this bike is 13,000 euro without anything on it. And if you are buying the adventure pack and the travel pack with the top boxes and the side panniers, it's close to 17,000 euro. And this is quite big amount of money. You can get different bikes depending on what you want to do for the same price or even quite less. So who is this bike for? If you want to do some travel, you can do it. If you want to use it in the city, you can do it. If you want to do a little bit of gravel roads or small off-roading, no problem, you can do everything with it. But at the end, it's quite expensive. And uh, I think if you want to 
have a real adventure bike, then go for an adventure bike and get a Honda Africa Twin or the Trans Alp. And if you want to have a travel bike for the just for the roads, long distance riding, maybe go for the NT1100, also with the DCT, same price. And if you want to have a city commuter just for city riding and to go for shopping and small distance, maybe take a scooter with a big luggage compartment under the seat for two helmets and some stuff for half the price. Or if you want to do some travel riding and want to have a city commuter, buy the Honda ADV for half the price and the NC750 also for a few thousand less than the Honda X ADV and you have two bikes for the price of one. So it's up to you. There are a lot of possibilities. I think the price is quite high for this kind of bike. The Honda X ADV can do everything. Maybe nothing perfect. It's not the perfect tourer. It's not the perfect adventure bike. It's not the perfect city commuter, but you can do everything with it, but for a quite high price. So this is my opinion. Maybe you have another one. Put it down in the comments. Would be interesting what you think about the Honda X ADV. So these are my experiences with the Honda X ADV and my thoughts about the pros and cons. And I hope you liked the video. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up. And if you didn't do it already, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon and you get a message if there's a new video online. And if you are riding, please ride safe. I see you in the next video. Take care and cheers.